Hi, welcome to the Plowbell Show. You don't know what a Plowbell is? Let me tell you what it is. In 1912, they had this camera that was all in one, rangefinder. Beautiful, beautiful camera. Go all the way up to now the 1980s. Well, now you have this camera, this camera right here. Look at this. Want to see how cool this is? Check this out. Ooh. This is a grail camera for about 90% of the people who want to shoot all in one medium format. 6x7 Plowbell Machina 67. This camera is completely mechanical, right? No batteries except for the meter. Now, if you want to, if you want to take it around with you, you just do this. You put this all the way back on infinity and you just all the way back. The neat thing about this camera is it's, it's his, besides its history, is that it's something that you can take around with you. All you street photographers, all you Leica files, well, most of the Leica files I know either have a Mia 7 or they have this. It's got a range finder. It's got a 2.8 Nikkor lens, which is kind of strange. The only other cameras that were medium format that had Nikkor lenses were the Bronicas, but they were 645. Oh no, I'm sorry, 6x6. The pictures you can get with this camera can really isolate a subject. Even the Mamiya 7, the fastest lens you can get is a 80 millimeter 3.5. One of the things about this camera is this was made by Konica, right? It is a German design camera made by Konica. You focus by turning this little dial right here, right? For those of you who've never focused with a rangefinder before, let me give you a little quick overview. What it does is it gives you two images of the same thing and you line up the images to make sure that it's in focus. So the way you focus with this camera is first you have to extend, right? This is really satisfying. When you press the button, it goes out. And one of the funny things about it is you want to sit here and you want to twist this lens to focus, but you don't. You have to use this little turny thing right here, turny thing, another word for knob, uh, to, to get focus, right? The other thing you have to get used to is a little quirky, is this is your aperture and these are your shutter speeds, right? So lining this up and getting used to that. So you'll mess up a couple of shots or if you don't want to do that, practice first without loading any film and you're good to go. The other thing you have to know though is this is really important so you don't stress the camera is before you shut the camera down you have to put it back at infinity, press the button and do this. Otherwise you're stressing the one wire I believe that's in here that's going to mess up the meter. So there's a lot of these around with not working meters. These guys are not easy to service, but there are a couple of people who'll service them for you, and they're not cheap. Not very many accessories for this guy other than a grip and maybe this lens hood. But um, one thing this camera is that's, uh, that's very, very, uh, very significant, <laughs> it's expensive, but, and you don't want to break it, right? A lot of people used to open these guys by pressing this button and just shoving it open. And what that does is it'll pull a little wire in the, in, the, uh, in the meter and it'll break the camera. Well, it'll break the meter anyways, you can still use the camera. The other thing is all the gearing in here is primarily brass. So when you advance the camera, people like to Well, you're not supposed to do that. Nice and easy. Right? Listen to the sound. Listen to the sound, guys. Isn't that great? Super quiet, too. So, perfect for street photography. It's not for everybody. You know, it's, you can't change the lenses, which is okay with me. And it, it is slightly big, but still, as far as medium format cameras go, it's small. You can use it in the studio, too. The meter in this is like a 10 degree spot meter. So exposures are usually dead on to your subject. Um, but you know, you can overexpose or underexpose a little bit depending on what you want to do. Anything else on this camera that I think is significant? No, other than the fact that uh, you don't want to mistreat it. 
You want to treat it like it's the best camera you've ever had, which every camera should be. I don't care if it's a Holga or this. The best camera is the one you have in your hand, right? But when you have this in your hand, you definitely feel it. Um, I'd give you a history on this camera, but again, what I told you before, the, camp the, the original German company started in 1912, but these are made in Japan. If there's anything about this camera that's significant other than that, is the fact that very people, very few people still use them. And uh, I'm one of them. If you have any questions, Hit us up at the Houston Camera Exchange, 5900 Richmond. Peace. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'd love for you to visit us in store at 5900 Richmond Avenue.